Are they merchants traveling afar to trade their wares? Where did they come from? The East? Persia, perhaps? Magi? Stargazers? Wise men? Could they be about the king's business? Each sunrise finds them repacking and moving on. Another day, another blistering day in the desert sun. Another day of scorching sand, creating strange mirages. Scorpions, poisonous desert snakes, bandits, who knows what a day might bring forth. Then the blackness of night with its chill penetrating every bone in the body. The cry of moaning restless winds. The beat of sand on the tent flaps the evening fires to huddle by, the evening meal with its talk of the day, talks about the star of Jacob, his star, that's his star leading us, a supernatural happening. The event of the ages is at hand. Daniel's prophecy of 70 weeks is now fulfilled. 490 years have passed. The Son of God is about to appear. The long, long journey approximately a thousand miles took the wise men to inns along the way strange the innkeepers knew nothing of the newborn king or his star the music played the dancers performed the drinking so much drinking and the gambling went on business as usual. Had they not seen his star? The wise men travel on. Jerusalem at last. Just ahead was King Herod's palace. The whole city was stirred by the appearance of the entourage. They were recognized and received with kingly protocol. King Herod was cordial, yet cautious. Something was wrong. Here they were at long last in the land of the promised one. Yet there was no expectancy, no joy, no celebration business as usual. Where is he? The wise men asked. They were looking for a person, not a creed, not a religion. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Deeply disturbed by their questions, King Herod called a special meeting of the Jewish religious leaders. Did the prophets tell us where the Messiah would be born? He asked. Yes, in Bethlehem, they said. The prophet Micah wrote, O 
little town of Bethlehem. You are not just an unimportant Judean village, for a governor shall rise from you to rule my people Israel. Then Herod sent a private message to the astrologers, asking them the exact time when they first saw the star. Go to Bethlehem and search for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him too. Herod had no intention of worshiping the child. Murder and hatred was in his heart. The astrologers started out again, and look, the star appeared to them, standing over Bethlehem. Entering the house where the baby and Mary, his mother, were, they threw themselves down before him, worshiping. Then they opened their presents, and gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Did you know the wise men had already received gifts from the giver of gifts? The gift of faith, God's faith, making their journey of faith possible. The gift of knowledge, knowing the supernatural happening of the star the gift of wisdom, revelation of prophetic fulfillment. When the wise men returned to their own land, they went home another way. Sound familiar? Another way. The story of our life as followers of the resurrected Christ. the king didn't know what was happening it was business as usual the religious leaders the high priests didn't know what was happening business as usual but something not usual is happening out there in the night fields What's going on? Who are they? Frightened, visibly shaken, humble, unlettered shepherds draw back from the brilliant landscape, bright with the glory of God, as an angel reassures them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced. And it is for everyone, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. How will you recognize him? You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, they sang. And peace on earth for all those pleasing him. When this great army of angels had returned again to heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They ran to the village and found their way to Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. The shepherds told what the angel had said to them about this child. And Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart. Then the shepherds went back as witnesses, 
praising God that they had seen the Christ child just as the angel had told them. We too, like the shepherds, have been chosen to share God's secret, a secret hidden since the foundation of the earth. God's Son became man, became one of us, incarnate, Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He took on our life that he might give us his life. maybe 15 or 16. She's staring in astonishment. Before her very eyes stood an angel. She'd never been visited by an angel before. Thoughts raced through her mind like flashes of light on a night sky. What is he here for? What's happening? The angel spoke, answering questions she hadn't asked aloud. You're highly favored, he said. Highly favored? No one had ever spoken to her like this before. Highly favored? Me? But, but I come from lowly origin. I've no special skills and and I'm not gifted like others. For generations, God had planned what family should care for his only begotten son. He passed up the ruling families around Jerusalem. His eye rested on a humble teenager in a lowly home in an obscure village of Galilee, Mary. Mary had a gentle and quiet spirit, something of surpassing value in God's sight, loving, obedient, steady, like a tree planted by the waters. She had a thorough knowledge of the scriptures and meditated on them. Mary pleased God, and he chose her to mold the human nature of his son. The angel continued, You're going to have a baby, a boy. His name will be Jesus. It will be God's baby. Before anyone else raised the question, Mary herself asked the angel, how can this be? The angel gave the answer, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Luke 1.35 The angel said the Holy Spirit would come upon Mary. Did you know that Jesus used the same expression when he said to his disciples years later, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Acts 1.8 Think of it. The very same power that came upon Mary was the same power that fell at Pentecost. 
the same power that comes upon us today. Nothing is impossible with God, quoted the angel. By faith, Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. Mary rejoiced in the Lord. Wouldn't everyone rejoice when they heard? Repudiated. Misunderstood. Forsaken. Reviled. Reproached. Even Joseph didn't believe her. Her life was like a dream for, from which she couldn't awake. That's the girl. Strange. Says she's going to have a boy. Now how could she know? Says he's going to be called Jesus. Says an angel told her. Imagine such a story. Who in the world does she think she is? All this angel talk. Did you know that Mary's pregnancy was reported by a doctor, a respected and beloved physician, Dr. Luke? You too, like Mary, are highly favored, chosen, chosen to bear the image of his son. Think about that. Chosen to suffer for his sake. Like Mary, to be misunderstood, to be reproached. If you are defamed for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the Spirit of glory, yes, the Spirit of God, is resting on you. First Peter four fourteen. Who is he? Joseph. His steps are heavy, so heavy, his shoulders stooped broken-hearted he walks away from Mary hurt disbelieving trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding how often he dread the word But now, thoughts kept coming. Imagine his thoughts. Imagine his suspicions. Mary, I never would have believed it. Oh, my God. And to lie to me on top of it. I wonder who he is. No marriage now. The law says Mary should be put to death. I couldn't punish her like that. No, there will be no public hearing. I'll put her away privately. Oh, oh God. <laughs> How could she? The reproach, the shame, disillusioned, broken hearted, Joseph fell asleep. Shh. 
An angel is talking to him. An angel talking to me, a lowly carpenter of Nazareth? Don't be afraid to take Mary for your wife, the heavenly being said. The baby she is carrying was conceived in her by the Holy Ghost. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Joseph rubbed his eyes. That's what Mary told me. She was telling me the truth. Oh, how could I do this to her? As daylight appeared, Joseph dressed and hurried on his mission. It finally led him to Bethlehem with Mary to be taxed, a journey of 70 or more miles. What an assignment. Mary, ready to deliver her firstborn. Could she endure the long journey in her condition? Her life and that of the child would be threatened. No nurses in white uniforms. No doctors with stethoscopes hanging round their necks. There wasn't even a hospital. And lo, that night of nights in Bethlehem, far from home, Jesus was born in a manger, a stable, because there was no room for them in the inn. Shortly, swarthy-faced, roughly dressed shepherds appeared in the manger doorway. Joseph met them. A baby, the Savior, Angels told you, Joseph repeated, swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Yes, yes, the Savior who is Christ the Lord, Joseph echoed. Oh, come in, shepherds, come in. The Savior. Christ the Lord, they said awesomely, almost in unison, their eyes big with wonder. Like Joseph, we would obey, even though we can't understand or comprehend sometimes. Obey even though explanations sound unbelievable and ir irrational.
is this little baby? This little baby who started his life in a splintered crib and ended his life on a splintered 